I also have to be to find out what are my values, what uh, is my background, family background, cultural background, religious background, really. Mm? So if I can define this and if I know who I am, even teachers don't know always who they are. So I think that's the first, very first important step to be open to others and to can accept other ways of thinking and other ways of yeah, values, other values. The most important thing that we can do as teachers to really show them that we think that they're normal and to allow um, space, to give them space to be who they are and to show them that their being different is really okay. It's it's okay to be different. It's okay to speak your language. It's okay maybe to have um, an Africa day or a Tunisia day or um, a Turkey day, like on a Friday. Yes, we're going to do things pertaining to Turkey on this day. We need to just to live this kind of culture and live this kind of acceptance is really very important. To be an intercultural teacher is a uh, willingness to try things that are new, willingness to experiment, willingness to to be open and willingness not to have all the answers. I think that teachers have a real tendency to um, think that their main duty is to teach or to transmit knowledge that they know about, yeah, so that the things that they feel most comfortable with. Yeah, and also if we are in Austria to transmit Austrian culture, Austrian history, which is of course very important. Yeah, but we have to consider there's a danger that we are also communicating in a subtext while your culture is not as important as Austrian culture, which is wrong. Yeah, I think there's space for both. We have, um, we have people who are, for example, from different cultures. I'm also from different culture. I can be proud to be an Austrian and proud to be a Trinidadian, which I am, and proud to be a European. There's room for everything. There's no either or. So I think it's the challenge is for teachers these days not only to um, move out of their comfort zone and to not only teach what they know, but to learn about what they don't know and allow space in the classroom for these new cultures or the cultures that are new for them and to give them on the same um, position, so to speak, the same, they, they, they are as important. But in the end, it, it, it all comes down to whether you are willing to um, try new things out, where you are, this is also very important competence that you are going to be giving to your students. When your students see that you yourself are curious, that you yourself, are, for example, you have different kinds of books that you would like to have them to read, not just the normal books that they may have heard about, but really stories from different countries, maybe um, folk stories from different um, countries, then they will see, ah, this is somebody who's really leading by example. Yeah, or as a teacher, I also try to as well to use different names, not only the typical names of the country, like in my case, uh, Austria, Andreas or Hansi, but use like Mehmet and Mohammed and, and, and Marita, and all these names that people say, well, they're hard to pronounce, but use these names. These are the names that, that the children like to see. They need to see that their names are being uh, used, that they're being respected and they're normal. I think this is the most important thing that we can do as teachers to really show them that we think that they're normal. I have been teaching for three years, so I don't have a, a huge pool of resources. I have to, I'm using my, I've now, did, I'm building my new, my resources at the moment, yeah. But still, I think um, even if I would be teaching for 10 years, I think I'd still be looking for new ways or, or reviewing things in my own materials because it all depends on the learning group. If I have a learning group with a lot of girls, I'd also try to learn to get a lot of girls stories. Yeah. I really try to, for example, on my worksheets to have pictures of, of, of um, African boys. Why not? Yeah. Or, you know, pictures of girls with, 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 with a, with a headscarf. Why not? Yeah, uh, this is really important for the kids to see that we'll be using images that are familiar to them, and not their idols shouldn't be uh, what may seem to be a stereotypical view of what an Austrian is or what a French person is or a German person is. But these can be different; they can look different, and different is okay.
And this is really important. There's so much material. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. And as I said, if you don't find something you can use, then create it yourself and give it away as well so that we can contribute to this really pool, really good pool of, of resources. So I think it's really important. It's a really important step for the intercultural competence teacher to do to create uh, materials and, 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 and resources that are that show that reflect this diversity and not just a singularity, so to speak. I think uh, these things have to be um, not only um, as separate themes, of course, it's a great thing to do as a separate theme, but it's also it's something very, very easy to do also when you're teaching other things. Yeah. So, for example, if I'm an English teacher, I'm thinking about food, or if I'm a computer teacher, as I said, and I'm, I'm teaching about... Um, I don't know, I'm teaching some kind of, you know, typing or, or programming. Why not give them a subject to do with, um, to do with integration, to do with migration? Um, create a poster. If I have a, as an assignment, create a poster to show some kind of proficiency in a, in a, in a program. Use the topic of migration. Use the topic of um, different cultures. I think there are many ways, not only just the theme to to use the theme, but also to do it while you're teaching other things. It's a it's a good time saver as well. And um, between you and me, there's so many opportunities during the school year to um, uh, to do this. For example, I don't know if many people share this experience, but we often have to. Uh, if a teacher is sick or if a teacher is not well, you have to go to the class. You have a surprise hour in another class. Mm -hmm. Create a few materials like this. And for these kind of classes, you you do a class. Do, you do an hour with this with this topic. Italian class. Let's talk, let's talk about um, migration during, the, during history in Italian. Let's go. What can you find? What's on YouTube? What's on this? Yeah. So there are many ways to create um, situations and create uh, time and space for these kind of activities.